We've invited in Professor Johnny Peter, head of the Allergy and Clinical Immunology Division at the incredible Greta Skjur Hospital and the head of Allergy and Immunology Unit at the UCT Lung Institute. We couldn't find a more qualified guy no, for this. this is um, and that's why we went out and found the prof. And we, I, I know we've touched on pollen count as a tool that we can use in our battle, um, but his expertise will take us through this unpleasant time of the year and really do a deep dive in how we need to read and respond to that data. Prof, welcome to it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much yeah. for having me. Wonderful to have you. Um, I think this is a topic that resonates with many, many of our mm -hmm. viewers. Too many, yeah. As well. I think everyone has got some sort of degree of some allergy this time of year. We spoke about that incredible website, pollencount.co.za, which is fantastic. You can see the real-time updates in pollen. But what does the term pollen count actually mean? Mm. If you take, if you want to dissect it now a little bit, there's one thing to see the color. Yeah. <laughs> but what does it mean? So what it means is uh, there's different ways of measuring, right? Uh, and the most conventional way of measuring pollen is essentially it's like a, like a drum that points to the direction of the wind okay. and it sucks in air at a very specific predetermined rate. That air literally at the back in the instrument on this drum is like a piece of sticky tape, you can imagine, right? right? The pollen, the, the wind, air gets sucked in there and if the pollen grains are in that air, they stick to the sticky tape. We then take them out, look under the microscope uh, and then I've got some very specialist, what we call aerobiology colleagues and those guys identify or ladies identify the pollen grains and then we use a little bit of maths and then we can calculate how many grains per cubic meter of air. So literally we're giving you an absolute count. The cool thing is that more recently we've started to use automated counters with artificial intelligence. Uh -huh. So instead of, in, in addition to this like sticky tape, we've now got a camera that's looking at the things, taking images, and then using Im AI images of that to identify the grains and do the maths for us and give us the counts. Right. This is great. Wow. This feels like in real time, yeah. we have a tool to utilize in that sense. What do we do with this information? And I mean this from a practical sense. How does this get plugged into your ecosystem? We know we get the end result in terms of knowing pollen counts and where it's high and where it's low, but what do you guys do with that information? How does that system work? Um, so, well, we take the information and obviously we feed it to the consumer, right? So the public, you guys get to see and, and I think you've discussed the traffic light system that we set yeah. up on the website. So that's the aim to like directly give people benefit. In addition, what we are interested in more on the kind of high level is we are interested in making comments about how our environment is changing uh -huh. over time, right? So you guys have also probably, you know, heard a lot about climate change. Unfortunately, climate change is impacting on our environment. Uh, and if you just look, we've, we've done some, uh, a great study that we are about to publish where we've got data on pollen monitoring from the 1970s. And if you compare that data from the 1970s to the last decade in the 10s to 20s, the length of our pollen grass season has increased by a month. Wow. On average. So continue so, down that path. Mm. If we don't address climate change, how will that affect this, this allergy system? So we don't. So one of the reasons as well, we've set it up from a scientific perspective, is that in the southern hemisphere, we are unfortunately way behind our northern hemisphere colleagues, uh. right? They've got, in Europe, there are thousands of pollen monitoring stations. In the southern hemisphere, we've got South Africa, we've got some in Argentina, some down in Australia, but otherwise, not much. And geographically and environmentally, our hemisphere looks very different, right? We've got much more ocean cover, our currents are different, our climates are different, our biomes are different. Completely different. And what yeah. that means is that the impacts of climate change may be totally different for us compared to the Northern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere data is very alarming. They have done some modeling data that's saying in addition to the pollen seasons increasing in length, like I just mentioned, we're actually going to get more allergenic pollen because some species that are allergenic, for instance, there's a species called ragweed. Yeah. As the climate goes up, the habitat for that species will increase, <laughs> which means it will invade into areas where people have never oh. been exposed, and now it will cause new allergies in that area. Now, we don't know for the southern hemisphere if that's the case, 
but that's the part of the bigger picture for why we're doing this project. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for spearheading the project in this sense because it, uh, once sure. again, it, it hits home with the information we can do so much more. And this seems like a system that can be propagated. So I don't know why the Southern Hemisphere is lagging behind to this degree, but I know a lot of people are feeling the allergy season hitting hard right now. So if you've got any tips or tricks on how you deal with this most intense time of the year for you, let us know on our social media pages or drop us a voice note. 06 6340888863 and I would suggest looking up the doc if it has gone too far and you need help there are resources around us and we'll keep those details up on our website for as long as you need them